This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. Republicans and Democrats are still at an impasse over President Trump's impeachment trial as House Speaker Nancy Pelosi continues to hold out on delivering the articles of impeachment to the Senate. AP correspondent Julie Walker reports. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell doesn't want new testimony. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer does, leaving open the possibility of a protracted delay. President Trump complained about the holdup Saturday. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. She has no case. But Schumer says they have even more evidence. This email is explosive. A top administration official, one that we requested, is saying, stop the aid 91 minutes after Trump called Zaleski and said, keep it hush hush. That email from senior White House budget official Michael Duffy, who Schumer wants to testify. Julie Walker, New York. At least 23 people have been killed in nearly two weeks of demonstrations and violence after India's parliament passed the Citizenship Amendment Act, which critics have deemed anti-Muslim. The new law allows for Hindus, Christians, and other religious minorities who are in India illegally to become citizens if they can prove they were persecuted because of their religion in Muslim-majority Bangladesh, Pakistan, or Afghanistan. The new law, however, does not apply to Muslims. Since the protests escalated, authorities in several parts of the country have imposed a rule prohibiting more than four people from gathering at one place. It also closed metro stations in the capital to prevent people from mobilizing and shut down the Internet and text messaging services in many places. Afghanistan's incumbent president, Ashraf Ghani, has apparently won a second five-year term. That's according to preliminary results announced Sunday for the disputed September 28th presidential vote. Ghani's main challenger received 39.52 percent of the vote. Ghani took 51 percent. VOA News. Voters in Croatia are going to the polls Sunday for a presidential election. Incumbent President Kolinda Grabar Kedorovic, a conservative, is being challenged by leftist former Prime Minister Zoran Milanovic and right wing singer Miroslav Skoro. Political analysts say there will probably be a runoff vote in January. The pre Christmas election comes just days before Croatia begins its first six month term at the helm of the European Union's rotating presidency starting January 1st. A senior United Nations official reports more than a million Palestinians are living in crisis conditions in Israeli-occupied territories. He's pushing a $348 million plan to address Palestinians' critical humanitarian needs. Lisa Schlein from, for VOA, reports for VOA from Geneva. The UN's recently launched 2020 Humanitarian Response Plan aims to assist one and one-half million of the 2.4 million Palestinians in the occupied territories. Most are residents of Gaza who are in particularly dire straits. The humanitarian coordinator for occupied Palestinian territory, Jamie McGoldrick, says nearly half of Gaza's population is unemployed. That figure includes seven out of 10 young people under age 30 who have no jobs. Among them, he says, are more than 400,000 university graduates who cannot find work. Lisa Schlein reporting for VOA from Geneva. In Britain, Queen Elizabeth II attended church near her rural retreat as her husband Prince Philip spent his second night in a London hospital. AP correspondent Zuria Shackley reports. Palace officials have not provided an update on the 98-year-old prince's condition following the announcement on Friday who's being admitted to hospital as a precautionary measure due to pre-existing condition. It's not clear if Philip will be released in time to join the rest of the royal family for Christmas at Sandringham, the Queen's country state in Norfolk. The Queen has not altered her holiday routine and went to church on Sunday as normal, joined by her son, Prince Edward. Zaria Shakili, London. Thousands of Iraqis took to the streets Sunday ahead of a midnight deadline to name an interim prime minister. Protesters on Sunday decried the likely pick former higher education minister Kusay al-Suhail, who was opposed by critics for his ties to Iran. Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi resigned Friday, saying he would stay on until a successor is approved. At least 460 people have died and tens of thousands of others have been wounded since the demonstrations erupted in October in Baghdad and in Shiite majority areas. I'm Marissa Melton. You're listening to VOA News.